Coach, first of all, welcome to Mississippi College. Tell me just a little bit about how the transition's gone for you and your family to Clinton and to well, MC. Well, Reed, thank you. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm very blessed to be here. Uh, the transition, uh, like any type of transition, is going to be tough, but at the same time, we're accepting this journey, and uh, me and my wife actually love Clinton, and it's been very much like home to us. Uh, the people are very friendly, and Mississippi College has been more than uh, hospitable to us. What have you learned about your team and about this program, the state of the program, uh, in fall practice last year and then leading up uh, to the first game this season? Well, if I can think of one word, it's a challenge. And it has been challenging, but it hasn't just been a challenge for me. It's been a challenge to uh, my coaching staff, the players. Uh, not only am I new to this, they're new to uh, a new coach coming in, a, a staff. Uh, but it, it has been great. The, the guys have actually uh, embraced the vision. They've embraced uh, a lot of things that I'm bringing to this program. Uh, and I feel like these guys, uh, it's a new sense of direction that I feel like they've desperately needed. And I hope I can fill that, that void that they, that, that they needed. You talk about your assistant coaches. I know you're probably thankful that you've got some guys who have been around a while. And also, who knows some of the players who are still with you and uh, can help you in that transition with your players? Well, you know, Coach Bell has been around the program for about nine years, uh, whether that's with uh, being a player, uh, to being a GA, to uh, actually being the uh, top assistant to uh, recruiting coordinator. Uh, you know, Coach Bell's bought in every step of the way. Uh, I hope I could just bring him a little bit of uh, knowledge to the game and, and make him a better coach. Uh, but he's been instrumental in all this. Uh, uh, he's been taking control of the hitters and, and doing a phenomenal job, plus with the recruiting efforts that we're trying to make to transition into a brighter future for MC baseball. He's done a great job. He's taken that direction and, and hit the nail on the head with that. And, you know, Coach Perez, he's been around the program for, for some time. And he's also uh, been instrumental in the recruiting efforts, and he's done a phenomenal job with the infielders. Uh, you know, our guys have uh, done a good job on the coaching staff of, you know, really buying into my vision and actually teaching our players to that effect. Talk about a couple of the players that you've got coming back uh, offensively and in the field. Caleb Upton, he had over 300 last year and uh, led the team in runs, batted in, and made very few mistakes defensively. He's coming back. You've got Logan Farrell, who actually finished last year with a nine-game hitting streak. So you've got some guys on offense and in the field uh, that do have some experience, and you've got to be pleased about that. Well, you know, Caleb Upton and Logan Farrell are both one of uh, our team captains. Uh, when you talk about team captain, they can lead in different directions. Caleb's more of the quiet leader. He's going to lead by example, whether that's how he performs. And, you know, whenever he does say something, it, may, it goes a long way to these guys. Uh, Logan Farrell is a, uh, one of those leaders that he's going to outwork anybody on the team, and you can't deny that. If he, he feels like one person's trying to get a step ahead of him, he's going to try to beat him. And it's that competitive edge that Logan has that drives him which is, I think, any coach's dream player. and Because he's going to be that spark plug that helps us go. Uh, yeah, they're very instrumental in what we got this year on offense, and not only offense, but defense, which is going to be very crucial to our efforts this season. Not a whole lot of pitchers coming back from last year's team. Tyler Scholl showed some flashes that he might develop into a closer at some point last year. And Taylor Olson gave a lot of innings to the Choctaws mm -hmm. and struggled at times with his command, but you've got something to work with there. Well, there's no question. We're going to be very young on the pitching staff side. Uh, we have a lot to grow, especially with a, uh, with a rotation. You know, there's any possibility that we could have two to three freshmen starting on the weekends for us. Uh, and, and, you know, I'll probably tell the pitching staff when we go into this, hey, just because we're hitting our first game doesn't mean our journey ends there. Our journey is going to end throughout the season. And, and for some of these freshmen, it's a four-year period that we got a, we got a journey to grow and get better. Um, you know, one of these things that I want to, you know, tell the pitching staff that, yeah, we're young, but we're not going to make any excuses to our efforts. Our job is to throw strikes, pound the zone, and understand that we're going to trust the defense that we feel very comfortable, it's very strong this year, that if we're allowed to throw those strikes so we can make plays. You've got a couple of young right-handers out of the state of Alabama. Talk about those two young men and how about they contribute this year. 
well, Sam, Sam Harrison is actually, he's going to be a shining star, I think, whenever it's all said and done when he ends his MC career. I think he's a kid that's got great projectability when it comes to an arm. Uh, is he fully there yet? No. I don't think he'll ever be satisfied where he's at. Uh, and we also got Tim Holloway. He, he's actually, he, he needs to just mature a little bit on the mound, but he does have the potential or the projectability of being a, uh, a great arm for us eventually one day. But Sam is, uh, he's actually pitching with some maturity, and he actually could be pitching like as a junior or senior would be in, in college. So we're, we got high expectations for him. Especially, I think, in the transitionary period to Division II, this is our last transitionary year, you might be looking for some guys to, to plug a hole here or there. And, and offensively, uh, Will Elliott, transfer from the <laughs> University of Alabama, is maybe somebody that you can count on this year. Well, Will, Will's a guy that we are going to count on. I mean, his defense in center field is unbelievable. He, he can track down balls like nobody's business. Uh, offensively, it's one of those things that he, he's not one of those guys that's going to stand out all the way. But when you go look down, hey, he, he just went three for four, and it was so quiet. So he is a guy that's going to be definitely instrumental into our lineup, and you know we look forward to it. And I do want to say, you know, one of these things that we're looking for on the pitching staff side is, you know, as we go into Division Two, it is a strong thing that we're going after in recruiting. And that is one of the main plugs that we're trying to uh, feel within this program. You come from a background in the, in the Gulf South Conference when Washita was in the GSC. What does it take to win in this league from your perspective as someone who's played and has been around this league a while? Oh, hard work every day. If you, if you stay stagnant in this league, somebody's going to pass you up. And so you have, to, you have to convince your coaching staff, you have to convince your players to never take a day off. Even though we are required once, uh, once a week to give guys days off, it's what you're going to do when the coach isn't looking. And we have to have that hard-nosed mentality. We have to have that sense of hard work ethic. And... And that's what we tell them. We gotta, we're never going to sleep when it comes to this. We have to work hard, and we're not going to let anybody pass this up. Coach, we appreciate your time. We're looking forward to the season. Thanks so much. Thank you, Reed.